Hi there, this is homework help video number two for the 2048 assignment. So we're going to talk about merging in this video, and I prepared a little test board here that places a 2 at row 4, column 2. So the question is, how can we move this 2 up? What does it mean to move a tile up? Well, if we think about it, it essentially means setting this item to 0 and setting this item to a value 2. So let's try it out. I'm going to be as general as possible here so that we can extend our thinking easily in the future. So I'll script my row and column, and I'll just set them here right off the bat. My row is going to start off as 4. My column is going to start off oops, as 2. Great. So I need to set this item to 0. I'll go grab a set. And we're thinking we're going to set item row column of test board oops, to what? Zero. We want to get rid of the tile here, and we're going to put it up here. But wait, before we get rid of the tile here, we kind of have to remember something. We have to remember what the value of this tile was. So maybe we can, in an effort to be general here, script this variable called tile value. I'm calling it tile value. And I'm going to set it equal to, how can we get out the value that was at this item before we set it to zero? Well, we have this convenient function item of board. And we'll say, before we delete this one, let's get the value of it. Great. So safely in the variable tile value is the value two. Now we can set item 42 of our test board to zero. And the next step is just setting this item to two, or to tile value. Now how can we express this item in terms of row and column? Well, it's the same column, and then the row is simply row minus one. So we'll go grab a minus one. We'll use the same column, moving it up. It's gonna still be on test board. And we'll set it now to tile value. We're pretty general here. So I'm going to go grab an update board before I forget. And let's see if this worked. And there we go. We've just moved that tile at 4.2 up to 3.2. All right, so now what if I wanted to move this to all the way up the column? Maybe I'm starting to think about how merge column might work. Well, this might just be as simple as doing this operation several times, just changing the row. So I'm going to grab a repeat. Now many types of repeats may work for this in the end. This is just the one I'm choosing to use right now because it's kind of convenient. So I'm going to repeat until my row becomes less than two. So after my row becomes one, I kind of want my tile to stop moving. But I'm going to do all of this inside my repeat and then change row by negative one each time I do it. And you might imagine what this might look like. And just to help us visualize this, I'm going to grab a weight one second and place it in here just so we can uh, see the tile moving up. So let me reset the board so that my two is back in position four two. Now just to dry run in our head real quick, let's see, we set row to four, set column to two, we're going to repeat until row is less than 2. We're going to do our little move up magic here, update the board, and then change row by negative 1. So when it comes back around and we set tile value to item row, we're effectively at the row above where we started now. And then you'll realize that all of these operations are the same, except we're starting at the row above the one we did it initially with. OK, so let's click this and see what happens. Great and then it finishes. So we just watched our two merge itself up the column and then hit the wall and stop. Okay, so now you may be thinking this is great and all, but I don't always want to move my tile all the way to the top. For example, if you've read the merge article that's linked on the spec, if you've read through this article, uh, you see that in some situations 
uh, you don't want to merge a tile all the way to the top. For example, here the 4 stops at row 2 because, well, there's a 2 in row 1 and it can't merge with that. So, how can we involve that thinking into what we've just done right now? Well, for starters, in this loop we stop when the row becomes less than 2, but we don't always want to go all the way there. We might want to stop early, so maybe we, instead of using row less than 2, we have some sort of variable, uh, something very general, something, something happened. So we want to repeat until something has happened. Maybe the thing that happened is our tile merged with another tile. Maybe the thing that happened is our tile hit an edge like it did here. Maybe the thing that happened is something more complex, like we hit a tile that was our same value, but it had already merged with another tile. So where do we check and see if something happened? Well, in here, in the loop, before we move our tile up, we might want to check, are we allowed to move that tile up? And if the answer is yes or no, maybe in some situations, uh, we change something happened to true. So that next time we come around to the loop, it knows to stop. Let's not check any more values. Maybe we'll move on to the next tile. Now it's important to keep in mind that this is not the only way of doing things, and you should find a way that makes the most sense to you. For example, another way we could do this merge up is we could keep a target variable and loop up, setting the target variable each time to the highest value or the highest row uh, to which we can move our selected tile. And in this way, you don't have to use your set items until the very end, after you've found a suitable location for your tile to move to. So there are lots of way, ways of doing things. Uh, just make sure that you read and understand the rules for the merge, and that your merge column function uh, performs the needed tasks. So I'll close out by talking briefly about the merge column block. If you open it up, you'll see that the merge column has two inputs, one for a column number and one for a board. And this is because merge column only looks at one column of a board at a time. What it does is it reports a copy of the board with the specified column merged up. So you only have to worry about the column input. So with what we did earlier, how we might apply this thinking is instead of setting column to 2, we'll set column to whatever our input column was. And furthermore, whereas earlier we only moved one tile up, in merge column, we want to make sure we merge all of our tiles up. So you might be wanting to repeat what we wrote earlier, except starting row at uh, an increasing number. So maybe first of all we move row two up, and then we move on and we wrote we move row three's tile up, and then we move row four's tile up, and so on until we hit the size of the board. So that's how we might extend what we did earlier. So to write a full merge column block, and definitely make sure you read through this merge article and you understand all of the rules before you uh, get too involved in merge column. And good luck.